Well, it looks like there's no water coming out of the water dispenser inside the refrigerator. So if you have the same problem here where you're not getting any water to come out of your water dispenser, we're going to show you today in this video exactly how to fix that. And it starts right now. Hey everybody, Jeff here and welcome back to the channel and if this is your first time here, welcome and be sure to hit that subscribe button down below right off the bat here so that you never miss a video and click on the bell icon that shows up next to it so that you'll be alerted every time we upload a video of which we have probably almost 300 videos now covering all sorts of repairs and engineering products and remodeling around your house. Okay, so the solutions that we're going to show you today will apply whether you have a water dispenser inside your door here or whether you have a water dispenser on the outside of your refrigerator door. Okay, now if you look at this sticker here, see how it says KitchenAid, but this is actually made by Whirlpool and Whirlpool makes refrigerators for a whole lot of companies. So chances are all of the solutions we show you here will work on your refrigerator or will give you inspiration to find the solution for your refrigerator. Okay, so there are five possible root causes for why the water dispenser in your refrigerator is not dispensing any water. And here they are. Number one, the first reason could be your water filter is clogged. So that would always be the first thing we tell people to check here. So it usually comes down, you know, like this, and you put in a new water filter here. And I usually will write with a magic marker what the installed date was because you should be changing your filter about every six months to a year, depending on the usage of water, the amount of water you're using. So check the instructions on your refrigerator for that. All right, so now that you've changed the water filter, if you're still not getting much water coming out at all, sometimes nothing, then we have to look at solution number two. Okay, root cause number two, it could be your water button itself. So this is an actual pressure switch here. So sometimes this could actually be bad itself. So when you push it, nothing comes out, right? However, in this case, and it will probably be the case for most of you, it's probably not the reason. Because if you push in the button, you'll feel the click, and you can hear it. it comes in the back. You can almost hear the water trying to turn on. So that's probably not going to be the cause for you. So if you don't feel the click there, maybe that would be the root cause. So let's move on to the next reason. Root cause number three, it could be the water reservoir that's on the back of your refrigerator on the inside. Let's take a look at it. So in this particular refrigerator here, so we can see in the back wall after I pulled out the, the vegetable drawer, see that little plastic water reservoir there? Sometimes what happens is that starts to get frozen and the water freezes up in there and so it just simply won't move at all. So if that's the case here, and it might be for most of you, you can solve this right now by getting a, um, a hair dryer and get it up real nice and close to it and put it on high heat and just blow it on there for several minutes until you can feel it all thawed out down in there. And once that's all thawed out, that should be the end of your problem. Okay, so if we open up the freezer now and we take a look at the ice maker, we can see the ice maker is still getting ice, okay? And so we might tend to think maybe that's not the water inlet valve that's causing it because if the ice maker is getting water, everything should be fine. However, okay, so that now leads us to problem number four. And this is your water inlet valve and every refrigerator has one of these. It's usually located at the very back on the bottom of the refrigerator in the back. So that means you have to pull off the refrigerator to get to this. Now, this is what we call a dual valve here so one of these outputs here is for the ice maker and the other output is for the actual water dispenser. And of course the single inlet right here is for your water line that comes from the wall. So we're going to replace this and we're going to show you how to replace this. So if you, as we come in close here and look at your filter head there, I want you to take a real good look. You see those two little white protrusions there? Those two little white, they're kind of like buttons that stick out there. So when you screw your filter in place, those two buttons right there, they push in and that's what allows the flow of water. So it's kind of hard to believe that the engineers that designed this 
they sort of made it so that uh, those tiny little things are what's controlling the water flow out of your refrigerator. Okay, so what we have to do is apparently they're worn down, so you might push in a little bit with the filter and it's not pushing them in as much as they should go in. All right, so before you do anything at all involving that water inlet valve there, you have to make sure that you turn off the water that leads to your ice maker under the sink. So in this residence here, you can see that's where you control it. There's no knob on it, we'll just use pliers, but we do have to turn off that water before you do anything. Because remember, this is under pressure. And if you just unscrew the hose off the back of the refrigerator there, you're going to find yourself flooded with water very quickly. So before you start, you want to make sure you have a bowl here to catch any water that might come out. So I'm using my rigid wrench here to loosen the nut, and then the other nut we have to hold steady while we loosen it. So there's going to be a little bit of water that comes out. Okay, so here's the bottom of the back of the refrigerator here, as you can see. And your inlet valve is right here. It's this whole apparatus. So this piece of metal that you see right here is that piece of metal right there. And then you can see here where the tube plugs into the top of the inlet there. That's that blue tube uh, going right into that blue inlet right there. So in order to get this out, we have to be able to unscrew all of these here and also get this plate out first. So the way these clowns designed this thing, it wasn't very conducive to you being able to just come in and remove this one plate. You have to take off the whole back of the both plates on the back of the refrigerator in order to make this happen. We'll do that with a quarter of an inch socket driver here. And if you don't have one of these, then you can just use a quarter inch socket with a ratchet. Okay, so now we have it opened and you can see you have to unplug both of those connectors there and remember which order they're in. Of course, they're, they're color coded there too for you. Okay, so you just pull off the retaining clip that will then separate the hoses here off of that little hex opening there. Now we pull this hose out by pushing down on this blue disc right there. So that will loosen it once you push it all the way down, then you can pull the hose out. Okay, now that it's out. Now we just have to loosen this one last hex nut right here. And this is what's actually securing this inlet valve uh, apparatus here to the back of the chassis piece. All the way around, everything, everything. Okay, coming around this way, reach around. Okay, so we're taking the old apparatus now off of the rear plate. Okay, so now to test your water inlet valves here, you want to put your digital voltmeter here. You want to set it to ohms right here because we're measuring resistance. We want to measure continuity from one lead of each of the solenoid to the other lead here. So we kind of go like this and see how the, the meter changes and it shows 183 ohms here on one of them. So that means it's pretty good. You want to see something in the couple of hundred ohms range. And depending on what type of solenoid valve you have, it could be anywhere up to 500 or even 1500 ohms. But the thing is, you don't want to see this. See how it says OL on there? That means overload, which means there's infinite resistance. So that means you have no connection. And then best case, um, you know, when you're measuring ohms, if you have like this here, see how it changes to 0.3? Uh, which is means zero, which means short circuit. So that's how you're measuring ohms. So uh, this one here measures about 185 or so ohms. And then the other one here is going to be a little bit different. He'll measure it about 250 or so ohms, 250 to 60. 
And there's nothing wrong with that difference there because each solenoid valve controls a different thing. One controls the ice maker, the other one controls the, the water dispenser. Okay, so this is how you test it. This particular one tests okay. Let's test one that doesn't work out okay. Okay, so now here we have one that we know to be bad. So let's check the first two leads here. Okay, that comes in good, about 183 ohms. Let's check the second one now. And you can see how when I put my uh, other lead on here, look at the screen there on my mul multimeter. The screen is showing overload. So apparently we're not getting continuity on this particular one. So that means it's bad. And you don't want to try to change or fix individual um, solenoids here. You're a lot better off just putting in a whole new unit. And these can cost anywhere from 30 to 40, 50 bucks, depending on who you buy it from. And we're going to take the new apparatus and insert it the exact same way the old one came out. And make sure it fits snugly down in there. Okay, so here we've tightened down the little quarter inch hex screw here. We put it back in, as you can see. And so now the part is attached, our, our brand new dual inlet valve is attached here and so when you look at the back you want to make sure that it fits into all of these these little slotted areas just like it did when you brought it out so just like when you removed it the first time you want to make sure that all of these metal tabs and everything all of these features slide under the, the original metal tabs just like they were so it's nice and rock solid in there okay so now one by one we're going to take the first hose off of the old valve and insert it into the exact same position here onto the new one here okay and we do it the, the same way i showed you before you got to push down on the disc here to pull the hose out and you're going to lose a little bit of water that's fine some water is going to come out so you just dribble it into the bowl there okay so now we're going to take that hose and just plug it right into here make sure it goes all the way in and stops now we're going to take the other hose off of the old valve, off the white part of it. And we're going to get a little bit of a squirt here and we're going to drain it into the bowl. Okay. And now we're going to insert that into the white one on the new valve. Right there, okay. So our two outlets are now connected the two outlet valves there and then we're going to reinsert this plastic piece here okay so that's now secure into position okay so now I'm going to unplug the yellow one off of here the yellow connector and I'm going to put it on the yellow connector onto the new water va inlet valve Next, I'm going to take the brown connector and unplug him off of the old water inlet valve right here. And we're going to plug him onto the connector onto the new inlet valve right here. So we have now completed our electrical connection here. All we have to do now is to, on the back here, reconnect the plastic piece back here and resecure our copper pipe here. Copper tube. Yeah. Okay, so then we snap this plastic piece back on, which secures our um, connection of the copper tubing here onto the plastic tubing there. And we just have one more connection to make here. And if I can get this guy out of the way a little bit, we just have to take this tube here and put him back in there. He's the inlet. Okay. Can we see it going right there? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do it without blocking it. Okay. So he is now insecure. And now we can come over here and screw the, the other end of the copper tubing back into our supply line. And don't forget to tighten this up nice and good here with our rigid wrench. By the way, this is a great wrench set. I'll put a link to this down in the description. This is a very handy wrench set to have. I use this for plumbing, basically. 
And these wrenches here are made for when you're doing cutoff valves, angle valves, all of those valves that control your vanity, your, your faucets under the sinks, the toilet uh, valve as well. These are all sized to just exactly fit those valves. So they're great to have. Okay, like that, just tighten it. Doesn't have to be super tight, but just enough so that when you turn the water back on and you're under pressure again, you won't see any leaks. Okay, so we've got everything tightened back in. So our valve has been installed. All the hoses are nice and tight. We're going to turn on the water. We're going to plug the refrigerator back in and we'll see how it goes. So before you push your refrigerator back in, this is always a good time to clean up all these little items that in dirt that you find them back here and when you have the back of the refrigerator open be sure to if you have a shop vac be sure to run your shop vac in there and just vacuum out the hole underneath and give it your annual maintenance okay so now let's give it a test here look at that it's coming out at full stream see that 